Welcome back to another episode of Small Spaces. Okay. Anyway, I am standing in my corner in my living room. It was the second small space. It is long overdue. And that is what we're doing today is we're decorating my corner and we're gonna go over some tips and tricks I have for decorating a corner. If you're new here, you know what to do. Subscribe. There's lots of singing in today. I don't know, I'm in a good mood, it's Tuesday. Um, and I'm excited about this corner. So subscribe, like if you like decorating videos like this one, and comment below um, if you have a corner in your house that you struggle with, because this corner I struggled with. If you have an area in your home that you like, super struggle with decorating and you just can't seem to get it right, that was this corner for me and that is why it took so long for me to post. But without any further ado, Let's get into this video. Okay, so I had a few needs from this corner. Um, the very first thing is this is in between two of my couches. So I needed somewhere for people to be able to set their phones and their drinks when they're hanging out in the living room. Um, I really wanted an extra source of light in this corner, so a lamp. Um, I needed somewhere to keep things like books and matches, um, a little bit of storage. And then I really just wanted some beautiful art in this corner, something that just made me feel good. Um, and that's the thing I struggled with the most. So that was my must have list. And I really love a clean and organic look. I like lots of textures. I like lots of naturals, greenery, um, ceramics. And Alex and I are really working into adding a pop of gold into our entire house. So that's something that I decided to do here too. Um, so, after I made all of those little lists, I went ahead and made a shopping list and I went on Pinterest and just gathered some ideas of what I was thinking. And you guys can see all of that here. I'll just leave a little reel. Okay, so as you can see, I really enjoy um, like an organic look. I don't really like super clean lines. Um, I love earthy tone colors. I really love the idea of doing some really large watercolor style prints up on the wall. Um, I wanted to incorporate maybe a plant or two with some books. Um, obviously the pop of black is like my biggest color in this area, but I did want a small pop of gold too. Um, maybe some textured baskets. Uh, I definitely wanted a lamp. I was thinking maybe a lamp that was clear so it wouldn't take up too much space and block the art that I had behind it, which you'll see um, in just a little bit here. So the first item, that I have here is from my last DIY video. If you guys saw that, it is this DIY cane table. Um, I picked this table up from Pier 1. It was not exactly what I was looking for, but it had the bones of what I was looking for. And so I grabbed it and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna paint it black. And I was terrified to do this because I was like, oh my gosh, what if it looks terrible? What if it looks stupid? But it ended up being so beautiful. I'm completely obsessed with it. I honestly, I should have known better because I love black. Black's a classic color. I feel like you can't go wrong. Um, there's such a thing as too much black, but as a pop of color in this instant, um, I really enjoy the boldness of the black table. Um, and so I went ahead and did that. And if you guys haven't seen it, go ahead and catch up after this one and check that out. Um, hopefully it'll empower you to do a little DIY of your own. And if you do, be sure to tag me on Instagram and show it off. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram already, what are you doing? I'm super active on there. I'm on my Insta stories all the time, sharing my shopping finds. Um, and you know, I talk about my life. So if you care about that. Anyway, um, so for this little table, I went ahead and made sure I measured properly too before I purchased. And that's a big tip. I would say um, any space that you're decorating, it never hurts to just have the measurements saved in your phone for all of the shopping that you do because it's really important that you don't buy something too small for your space or even something that's not gonna fit. Okay, so let's talk about the very first thing that I picked up and that is this beautiful seagrass weaved basket woven seagrass woven basket um i love this basket I get up close for the details here for you it is a very shallow basket which i knew i needed something shallow because the space underneath the table on the shelf is not very large 
and then I wanted it to be neutral but you know a lot of baskets end up being that same warm tone tan and I really wanted it to brighten things up because that table was so dark I wanted some contrast so I love that there are white and it's got a little bit of a braided accent detail I mean it's just gorgeous it's handmade um, and I picked this up for $25 at my local um, home decor store here, Main and Gray. I love them so much, you guys, honestly. Sorry, I'm playing with my hair a lot. Um, they could have all my money. But um, that is gonna be my first tip for you here. Um, storage baskets, make sure your storage is decorative. So functional beauty, you really want it to be, you know, styled based on what you need in your life and in this space. And for me, I didn't need this for anything specific yet, but eventually I might need this for toys or for, you know, remotes or, you know, dog toys, whatever it is. Um, and I can put that in here. I would also suggest if you have some things that you don't wanna see, but you still need to store them, get a basket that has a lid and that way, you know, it's easy access. It's right where you need it, but you don't have to see all the mess. Okay guys, so the next thing I picked up is this string of wooden beads. Um, I think I might have a slight obsession with wooden beads as does every other home decorator. They serve no purpose, which is not typically in my style, but they make me feel happy. So I picked these ones up from Hobby Lobby. They have the little loop if you'd like to hang them like a garland, which I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with these, um, but I knew that I liked the fact that they were gray and that was a little bit different for me. I also like this natural texture and I try to incorporate some natural textures just about everywhere I go. Um, in my home, so everywhere I go, everywhere I decorate in my home. So I really liked these. I just felt like it was really unique and um, I like that they had a few balls here that were a little bit different size, just gives it some interest. So um, I would say, you know, when you're picking up pieces and you find something that just brings you joy, it has use in your home, right? You see it, it makes you feel happy, it makes you feel proud. Pick it up, make yourself happy, make yourself proud. Decorating is supposed to be enjoyable. I like to have function in, in most things that I put in my home, but not everything's gonna be functional and that's okay too. So I just thought this guy was super cute and I think I picked it up for like $11 or so, super cheap. Also from Hobby Lobby, this golden sphere, I actually got this 50% off. I think it was originally $15. So I got it for about $7.50. Um, it is just so pretty. I told you we wanted to incorporate gold again. Not so functional, but it just made me happy. And one of my goals was to incorporate gold in my home. So I feel like this achieved something. Um, it's super simple, it's super lightweight, it's easy to move. Um, and I like that it's got a little bit of like antiquing on it. It doesn't look brand new. It's got some shiny spots and some matte spots. So it looks a little worn in, lived in, which is kind of the style I go for. A little bit more of a vintage modern. Okay, so the next item that I picked up is this mini dough bowl. So cute. This is white and kind of sanded and roughed up. Um, it's wooden. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. So I needed somewhere to keep, you know, things for candles like matches or lighters or even my remote. Um, or if somebody wanted to put their keys in here, hopefully I'll have a place for that eventually, but right now I don't. So just, you know, random things that I can toss in here. Um, but I just thought this was really cool, super unique. Um, the texture is really cool. Again, it's white, so it'll help brighten up the table, brighten up the space. And um, it's a very organic texture and feel. I got this from a local antique store here um, in Rock Hill, a little bit down the road from me. And yeah, that's something that I will say, tip, um, antique stores, thrift stores, those are great places to find little things. Um, people don't always love the treasure that they have and we can repurpose those things and you know, be more green if you're into that. So <laughs> I would just say to check those places first, support your local shops, support thrift shops um, and antique stores, and you might just find some little gems. All right, and at this same thrift shop, um, I found, well, I guess it's not a thrift store, antique store. I found <laughs> these little baby, and I don't know how well you can see these. Let me just hold it up like this. 
It is a match container. It's in this little baby corked um, bottle and they have match strikers on the bottom. They have these all over Amazon um, in really cutesy versions with labels that say matches. I just wanted something really, really simple um, so that I could keep this here next to my candle and I wouldn't uh, you know, have the ugly red match box or whatever it is, an ugly lighter there all the time. Um, and I just really love how dainty these are. It really is all in the details, you guys. Um, you know, again, this is something that made me happy, but this is also something that's functional and I use it all the time. On Amazon, they have these little guys um, for close to 10, $15, especially if you want one of the nicer ones that are ceramic. So I paid $2.99 for each of these. Again, supporting local can really, you know, can really be beneficial, especially when you're on a budget. But I would also say this is definitely an easy DIY as well. Something that I didn't think of until I saw it. Um, but you could totally pick these supplies up at a craft store and do it yourself. So if you didn't want to spend the $2.99, you could do it on your own. Okay, so one of the last things that I picked up was this little vessel here. Um, I told you guys I wanted a plant or some greenery in this corner and I didn't know, um, you know, wh exactly what height I was looking for until I got to Hobby Lobby and I saw this bad boy and I thought, well, if I wanted it to be taller, I can pick some taller greenery. If I wanted it to be shorter, I can do some low hanging greenery, but I love this so much. It's got a matte and speckled bottom and a glossed and speckled top. I love the two-tone, again, the white to brighten it up a little bit. It's got an organic feel. Um, it's very wide mouthed. <laughs> and um, I just thought it was so beautiful. It's got, I don't know if you guys can tell, this really pretty cracked detailing. Um, and I just really love it. So I, along with this, picked up these stems. And I'll just show you one. Um, this is a very different greenery for me. I loved how soft it was. This is also from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is a wonderful place to pick up greenery stems, um, just about anything actually, because they have so many sales. Um, they're constantly running 50% off coupons, 40% off coupons, sales on their faux greenery. And I really loved this one. It's very twiggy. It has a fun and organic shape to it. It doesn't look too fake. And it's got a really soft green feel to it. I didn't want anything too bright green or hunter green in this corner. I just wanted it to be kind of like a background plant, just a fun addition. Um, so I picked up three of these so that when I bunched them together, it was really full and bushy. Um, and when you put them in the pot, they really fill it out, but they're still low. So it looks full, but not too tall. Okay, and here's this bad boy. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it because he's pretty big, but this is a lamp, obviously. This lamp is from Home Depot. Surprisingly, I found a lot of things at Home Depot, especially online, that I loved. They are a little bit on the pricier side, but I'm seeing great reviews and great quality, and that is actually why I chose this lamp. I had seen this lamp on a lot of places like CB2 or Crate and Barrel that were really similar in style and color and height, but that were 300 and upwards dollars. And your girl's not spending $300 on a lamp. So I picked this up from Home Depot. This is a really like, I, I don't, I don't want to say antique, but maybe a little bit more of a champagne -y gold finish. And then the glass, you were actually able to fill this if you'd like to. Um, it's not my thing, but if you had a nautical style home and you wanted to put sand in here or dried flowers or some kind of stones, I think that would look really cool. And then I just picked up a really basic um, linen style shade for the top in a nice soft white. So adding lighting to a corner or to a dark space is a great way to make it warmed up and feel a little bit more lively. Um, the light bulb that I chose for my lamp is an EcoSmart light bulb. It's just an LED light bulb um, and I got it in soft white. I have a mixture in my home, which I, I plan to change eventually, of warm toned LED um, like Edison bulb lights and then also like a bright white um, in my recess light. And so I thought this was a good in-between. Um, it's a soft, relaxing light temperature. So that's also something that I would like to add is in my living room, I don't want anything bright or aggressive because I'm not trying to see or focus on something specific like a book or working. I'm just trying to relax in that area. So when I turn that lamp on at night, it feels relaxing and soft and just kind of sets the tone. 
Okay guys, and last but not least, I have these really huge floating picture frames. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you, but I'll just insert a clip here. Um, I love these, they're so sleek, they're so clean. I love the black, of course I do. <laughs> um, I love the black edges, I love how modern they are, um, and I love the contrast with the glass and then the white, um, soft white paper. Um, the art that I put in them, I made myself. And if you guys would like to see a video on how to DIY your own art, um, I'm not a professional at this. I, to be really honest, it took me a good three or four times trying at this because I am a perfectionist. I'm a little bit picky, um, but it was actually a really fun process. It wasn't frustrating. It was really stress relieving. So I'll put in a little clip here. If you guys want to see that, let me know. Give me a thumbs up um, and I'll definitely post a DIY on some different kinds of art. But for this, I just wanted it to be super neutral, um, very in the background. I wanted earthy tones. I wanted it to feel like it was gonna match whatever I put up in here seasonally. So if I was decorating for Christmas or I was decorating for fall, it wasn't gonna clash or, you know, throw anything off. Um, I also really wanted it to be simple and pleasing to the eye while also having an organic feel. So I didn't want super clean lines. I didn't want super modern or digitally printed. Um, and that's just my preference and my style and most of what I do. Um, but you can have so much fun with art. Art is a great way to spice up a space, especially a blank wall. You can do so much. There's so many different kinds of art. Um, and for me, I really just enjoyed the process of creating these on my own and finding something to be proud of. We'll see how often I switch this up, but I really like them for now. Um, and then the other thing I will say, you guys, is, you know, art doesn't always have to be in a frame. Um, you guys can definitely think outside the box here. This can be, you know, mirrors, this can be sculptures, this can be, you know, a plant wall, this can be so many different options, mosaic tiles and pictures of you and your family, um, gallery walled, you know, art is definitely a great way to put a personal touch on a space. And just a little extra pro tip, um, for when I choose art as far as sizing and measuring, the art should take up two thirds of your wall space. Um, and this is just a general rule to kind of help you because I know it's really hard and you don't want to get something that's too small for your wall or too large for your wall. Mm. There's no hard and fast rule, but that's what really helps me choose and pick my measurements. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Small Spaces. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm so happy to have this corner checked off my 
list and I can't wait to move on to the next one, comment down below and let me know what corner or space you'd like to see decorated next, whether it's the space in your home, maybe a bathroom or a dining room table, tablescape for the holidays or floating shelves like these ones behind me. I would love to do something fun that you guys are doing too. We can decorate together. Um, but that's it for now. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching.